Whether the team is performing clean or unsightly, we'll cover it all here on Washington Football Nightly. I, of course, am your host, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. Let's get to tonight's lead story. So upon further review, after watching the offensive film and combing through uh, what was a lot of offensive snaps for this football team, they were dominant defensively, getting the football back to their offense. The offense did a tremendous job of sustaining offense throughout the game. A lot of offensive snaps, especially in the first half of this game. I literally uh, put out a video today uh, on Patreon with two hours worth of first half offensive film breakdown. So a lot of plays, a lot of plays that were impactful that needed to be broken down. And uh, it was some really good stuff. And, you know, that was one of those performances where someone like myself who has been preaching that the team is getting better, but you, you weren't really seeing it necessarily show up on Sundays on the scoreboard, but you could see it watching film. This team's getting better, and I get it. It's the Cowboys, and I, I have to reiterate that because I know someone out there is going to be saying, it was the Cowboys. You're right. It was the Cowboys. The week before, it was the Giants. It doesn't matter who the opposition is. You still have to go out and execute. And if you don't execute, even the Cowboys or the Jets or the Jaguars or one of these teams that's struggling this year can beat you. Just like us. We, we were struggling, but we had a win. The, the, the Giants did not have a win. They executed. We didn't. We lost. It can happen to anybody in this league. So um, I thought the execution was outstanding in week number seven. And, and the film bears that out. I told you I was anxious to watch the offensive film because you, you had uh, Cornelius Lucas out there at left tackle. Uh, you had a lot of two um, running back sets, a lot of 21 personnel because of the, the wide receiver situation. They didn't want to put a lot of those young receivers out on the field. And so we got a lot of what I've been asking for this entire season, which was 21 personnel. I want J.D. McKissick and Antonio Gibson on the field at the same time because I think that's when we're at our best. And some of our biggest plays in this game – came with those two on the field together the big Antonio Gibson run at the beginning of the game on the first possession of the game came in 21 personnel it was fun to watch all of the creative things that we did in 21 personnel throughout the game it was fun to see guys get opportunities down the field Terry McLaurin Cam Sims uh, uh, Logan Thomas uh, there, were, there was a lot of good that came from this game. I thought the offensive line was exceptional in this game. And not just from a pass-protecting standpoint. The run blocking was pristine in this game. I was so impressed with how these guys up front performed. Down a man at left tackle against a relatively healthy Dallas Cowboys defensive front. Um, we got after it. And they blocked their balls off in this game. And they opened up some gaping holes. I thought the running backs did a great job of exploiting those holes. Uh, we talk about all the meat being left on the bone week after week with some of these runs, lack thereof, in terms of vision. And I thought it was a good balance between run and pass. And there were some situations where I would have done something differently. But you can always second guess. Um, in hindsight, I don't really like to play that game a, a ton because, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. It's easy to say what you would have done or what you should have done or what they should have done uh, after, you, after the fact. But I, I thought this was one of um, Scott Turner's best play calling games, kept the Cowboys off balance, especially in the first half. I thought in the second half sort of took, especially the fourth quarter in particular, thought they took their foot off the gas pedal a little bit. Um, I, there was one sequence that I didn't love third quarter, end of the third, into the fourth, early stages of the fourth quarter, we get into the red zone. I wanted 30 bad. So that's part of the reason I was so hard on them. Up 22 to three, we had an opportunity to get in the end zone. I didn't necessarily love the play calling when we got down there towards the, the 12, 13 yard line in that vicinity. Thought we had some questionable play calls there. Didn't think the execution was as sharp by um, the offensive line nor the quarterback. Um, in those instances, and so thought we left an opportunity out there. You know, we had some questionable decisions by Kyle Allen down in the red zone on that particular set of downs. All of that is going to be on display on the film. I'm pretty much done with the film, putting the finishing touches on the second half film. So, um, all in all, best day by far and away. And I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, 
by the performance and the score, but best performance of the year by uh, offensive coordinator Scott Turner, best offensive performance uh, of the season by the offensive line, and that's despite having your starting left tackle. And for those of you who are thinking about replacing Jaron Christian with Cornelius Lucas, I, I'm good. I, I want Jaron Christian back in there. Cornelius Lucas didn't do anything wrong, but um, I, I don't think he's an upgrade necessarily or, over Jaron Christian. I, I think it's good to know that in a pinch, if we do have to go to the bench, we got a guy that can step in and won't soil himself, <laughs> as a wise man likes to say. He won't wet the bed. All right, so that's good to know that Cornelius Lucas can come in. He didn't do anything great in this game. His performance was not earth-shattering. He was just unnoticeable, and that's what you want as an offensive lineman. If we don't call your name, if you don't have any penalties, you don't give up a big sack, if you just do your job, you go unnoticed. It's the craziest thing that these offensive linemen are among the most impactful in the game. If they don't do their job, we're going to know about it immediately. But when they do... They get little to no praise. I'm going to make sure that they get it here. They were outstanding in this game. All right. One of the best cohesive five-man groups I've seen all season long. These guys were in sync. Uh, The double teams were sharp. They were climbing to the second level. They were sustaining blocks. They were opening up holes. These guys were outstanding. And uh, they were just as good in the past game as well. Uh, There were some issues with Kyle Allen stepping up a little bit. Um, in the pocket or getting out uh, prematurely. I I touched on that in the film. He can be better, okay? Um, Some of the play calling can be better. Some of the execution can be better. But uh, I thought, again, as I felt the last couple of weeks, uh, we are trending in the right direction, and that offensive performance was definitely a sight for sore eyes. The 52-yarder to Terry, Uh, The pass interference penalty. When's the last time we had a pass interference penalty down the field on the opposition this season? Like, the fact that we don't throw it down the field means you're not getting opportunities to get the yellow hanky thrown onto the field in your favor, on your behalf. So um, just to see the yellow hanky come out for a PI down the field was big. To see Cam Sims uh, be able to stretch the football field vertically, that was huge. To see Logan Thomas get an opportunity on a 50-50 ball and him come up big there, monster. I mean, that's huge for this offense. It gives us confidence that in these situations, guys can step up and make plays. So a lot of good takeaways from this game. And to think, we're going to get Steven Sims the junior back at some point. Isaiah Wright's going to come back at some point. And now with Cam Sims getting run and getting more comfortable, we're going to be that much stronger at the wide receiver position. What was once... A a glaring weakness is becoming a strength slowly but surely because I like what I've seen out of Cam Sims. And I think he deserves more opportunities. Even when we get fully healthy, I want to see him take over some of those Dontrell Inman reps. I think he's fully capable of doing that. So, uh, And he played a lot more in this game than Dontrell Inman did, just for the record. I think they like what they're seeing out of of Cam Sims. and, And it's not long before he's taking those Dontrell Inman reps. On a permanent basis. When Steven Sims comes back, it's not surprising if it's McLaurin, Sims, and Sims. They're wide receivers who know how to win. (laughs) Anyway, um, let's get to in other news. So uh, we got some roster moves to talk about in other news. Uh, Let's first start with the obvious, the safety position. This is a position that we've talked about since the injury to Landon Collins He officially was placed on IR by the team, meaning that there is a roster spot available, which they decided to fill with practice squad safety Jeremy Reeves. And I told you guys, I wasn't sure if there was a safety on the practice squad that they liked. I forgot all about Jeremy Reeves. I actually like Jeremy Reeves. So I don't have a problem with him being moved up to the active roster. I told you, it. More likely than not, I didn't think that they would go out and get a veteran safety. I didn't think that they were going to make a move for an Earl Thomas or an Eric Reed per se. But I said, if, if there's a, a young guy on somebody else's practice squad that they liked, similar to Robert, um, uh, the um, Robert, uh, shucks, the, the um, Ex-Alabama Buffalo Bill wide receiver that we yanked off of the Green Bay Packers, uh, Robert Foster, that's his name, uh, practice squad, that they would do that at the safety position. If they liked a guy 
that they think they thought could play uh, that could help them, they may yank him off the practice squad and, and up elevate him to our active roster. But we already had a guy in Jeremy Reeves, and, and we've seen Reeves on the field for us in the past. He's performed well. I like Jeremy Reeves. He'll give us some depth, a guy that we can trust on specials and in a pinch he can come in and play. And so they're going to roll with Jeremy Reeves. There's a report out there that Washington reached out to uh, free agent safety Eric Reed and offered him, similar to the Ravens with Des Bryant, an opportunity on the practice squad to which he turned down too much pride there for him. Uh, he doesn't want to be on the practice squad. I don't blame him either. You know, um, you're not going to be paid a, a ton of money on the practice squad. Uh, I don't know what he's got going on off the field, but look, if it's not worth my time to come off of my couch, I'm not going to. I don't blame him. Um, it, it just, how bad do you want back in the league? Obviously, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want back in the league that bad enough to where he's willing to take a spot on somebody's practice squad. He probably feels like if you see my body of work, you know what I'm about as a football player. I don't belong on anybody's practice squad. If you're not going to give me an active roster spot, which you clearly have a spot for on your team, then I'm good. And so uh, he decided to decline uh, the offer to be a member of Washington's practice squad, which is fine. I, I totally understand his position. Uh, no, no skin off of my back. Uh, they'll go out and they'll sign someone else to the practice squad. I think Washington right now currently has like five openings on their practice squad. They've got a lot of work to do. And obviously, you don't want to get too aggressive out there because you don't have to make any moves right now because we're on a bye week. But eventually, Isaiah Wright is going to be back. And he's still on the active roster. But you're going to get some of these guys back off of IR, like a Steven Sims, for instance. And, and when that guy comes back, somebody's got to be, you know, released and then hopefully promote it back to the practice squad. So you can be aggressive and, and, and get some guys and, and add them to the practice squad. But you also, um, you don't have to be overly aggressive right now because you're going to have some guys coming off of IR uh, eventually, you know, that you like that are, are going to join this team again at some point, potentially, you know, like a, uh, a, a, a Greg Stroman, for instance, you know, is a, another guy that is currently on IR that may eventually be able to come back. And when he's ready, you know, he may be able to rejoin this football team. Maybe he isn't going to rejoin. Maybe they love Danny Johnson. I love what he's been doing. I personally don't want to see Danny Johnson go anywhere, but uh, we'll see what happens you know, with the practice squad and what they decide to do. But the big news today, Jeremy Reeves activated and elevated from the practice squad to the active 53-man roster. And also Washington has reached out to Eric Reed to be added to the practice squad to which he declined. So uh, that is the news from the safety position. Landon Collins officially placed on IR. His season is done. He's looking to have surgery here in the near future on his Achilles tendon. So uh, with that being said, um, not much here uh, by way of news. It's Tuesday uh, on a bye week, no less. So not a lot of information out there, but I will say this, Morgan Moses spoke to the media today, had some really, really um, uh, gushing things to say about Terry McLaurin, uh, Ch Chase Young, a lot of these young players that have stepped up and played really well. Um, he said everything that you expect from a veteran on this team. And really, uh, Morgan Moses is one of the senior members of this football team, along with Ryan Kerrigan. They're probably your two longest tenured Washington Redskins or, or football team members. So um, th these are guys that a lot of players look to for guidance and, and uh, motivation. And, you know, Morgan Moses, I think, is a guy that really usually has the, the pulse of this team. When they um, sat down, Adrian Peterson, he was very vocal saying that he didn't agree with that move. Um, he's always been outspoken, and I trust Morgan Moses when he speaks that he has the pulse of the locker room. And right now, he said, I wish we could play this week against the Giants. The camaraderie, the momentum, the, um, the, 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 all of the things that we were looking to build, we've built it now, and we're ready to explode, and we would, would love to have played this week, to be honest with you. And to take it a step further, as far as his injury situation is concerned, he's like, I'm fine. I'm good. You know, the normal bumps and bruises that you have after a game on Sunday. But I'm ready to go. If the game were this week, he would have been ready to go. So that tells me he'll be perfectly fine and ready and rearing to go in week number 10 when we come off the bye. Or excuse me, week number 9 when we come off the bye and take on the New York Giants. So 
Um, I think we're going to get healthy. We're getting healthy at the right time. Uh, I think we're ready and poised for a a big time playoff type push. This is all I asked for. You know, was uh, meaningful football. I know it's not five and two Washington taking on you know five and two New York, but rather or you know four and three New York. It's two and five Washington versus more likely than not one and seven New York. But I don't care. I I, I really do not care about that the Giants have Tampa Bay on on Thursday night football they're going to get destroyed um are the Giants or is it it's Monday night I believe they play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. they're gonna get destroyed on Monday so hopefully they come in um it's a short week for them hopefully they get their asses torn up and come in wounded and weary and with a day less of rest hopefully they're there for the picking for a a fresh Washington team coming off of the bye week uh, I'm looking forward to it, but and so is Morgan Moses, and I think so is the rest of this team. Uh, they sound re- reinvigorated, they sound energized and charged up, and hopefully that leads to a nice little streak here in the middle of the season that propels us uh, into uh, a tough stretch of football that we've got, you know, down the road. But I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to focus in on that. I want to focus on the here and now. And again, um, this win over Dallas was massive for a number of reasons. But um, none more so than, you know, the the confidence of this football team. These guys are really confident right now. And uh, you're hearing them speak and you're seeing it. And I hope it continues. So with that being said, uh, I do want to uh, put this out there to you that um, on Flick, in the community, MOBB stand up. We in the building as usual. Um, I appreciate every single one of uh, my mob squad brethren and sistren uh really appreciate you guys um uh, joining the 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 community um i had someone let me see if i can find it real quick on flick that wrote a comment that i kind of found interesting because i kind of felt the same way and i put a new poll up on flick so um and i want to continue to get your guys's opinion on um i had another poll already up and a lot of you have participated as a matter of fact I'm looking at the poll now and over 200 of you guys, nearly 250 of you um, have voted. That's great participation. I want more of you to participate. Uh, I've got a quiz up here from the 2004 to 2007 season. I call it the Gibbs 2.0 quiz, which is the Gibbs 2.0 years in Washington. Uh, Test your knowledge there to see how you can do on that. And I put a new poll up um, uh, about the the game versus Dallas. And I'm going to put another poll up. I got another poll idea that I want you guys' opinion on. But I also wanted to uh, tell you guys about Flick. And, oh, yeah, I said I wanted to find that um, comment. So let me look and see um, if I can find that comment. You know what? It's not up here. It's on YouTube. And I don't know if I'll be able to find it fast enough. Let's see. Maybe it's here. Um, yeah, no, I won't be able to find it fast enough, but uh, essentially the person said, man, I was actually a little apprehensive about joining, um, flick and, and chopping it up with you guys during a game because I thought it would distract me, but he said it actually made me focus more on the game. I was more in tune to what was going on. I felt the same way, which is part of the why I was so apprehensive initially starting this group because I was like. I don't really know. I'm, I'm so laser-like focused on game day. I like to kind of be in my own head. I, I want to watch the game in peace. But talking to you guys during the game has been invigorating. And, and, and as he said, I find myself being more focused. I don't know if I can be more focused. I don't know if that's true. I just know it hasn't distracted me one bit. I'm just as laser-like focused as I always am when I'm watching a Washington game. I'm just as intent and... I'm able to still communicate with you guys, laugh and joke at you guys. Um, We we wallow in misery together when we make a bad play. Like in that Giants game, we were all kind of just like stunned together. Um, And then then you had one person in there saying, you guys give up too soon. This game's not over. You know, and we're all sitting there. It's only 20 to 14. We're all sitting there, 20 to 13. We're all sitting there like, oh, this game is over. We suck. Oh, my God. And this guy was like, no, this game's not over. He was right. We were right down the field and scored. We didn't get the two-point conversion, but he was right. So sometimes, you know, being in that environment with people that are positive, that give you those positive vibes, 
you know, it, it helps you in these games sometimes when you think you're going to lose your damn mind. So if you haven't already joined Flick and become a part of the MOBB stand up, we in the building, please do so. It, it, you won't regret it. I, I, and also one more thing about the Flick community. Um, this, th there's this little kind of like fantasy football game where you pick a player and, you know, you got five slots, you pick five guys uh, from the game that you think are going to be impactful, the guy that you think is going to have the most points, touchdowns, you know, uh, yards, et cetera, et cetera. And, and uh, you can, you know, use bonuses and things of that nature. And I, I just figured this out. There's actually a cash prize. If you've got uh, Venmo or PayPal, uh, you can win up to $25. Um, it's a first, second, and third place prize that is being given away. First place is 25 bucks. Second place is uh, 15 bucks. Third place is 10 bucks. Uh, you can win some money for just joining the group and playing in the game. And um, if you pick the right five and it totals out to the most points at the end of the game, you win a cash prize. So, um, you know, that's another reason. Join in, have some fun, and maybe even win you some bread in the process. So uh, uh, join in on the fun on uh, Flick, down in the description, the link is there. Become a member of the Mob Squad, and uh, let's have some fun. Anyway, I digress. I'm going to glide to the side, allow you guys to enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to finish putting the, the uh, last the bits and pieces of this uh, film study together on the offense in the second half. First half is already uploaded, so if you're not on Patreon, get on Patreon. This was a very fun film study. Uh, when you win, it's always more enjoyable. And when you play as well as we did, there's a lot to, to assess the good, the bad, and some of the ugly. And it's all still there. You know, just because we won and we, we dominated doesn't mean we didn't do some things and have some things to clean up. It's all there in the film. So if you're not on Patreon, what are you waiting on? Get on Patreon. That link is down in the description as well. So I'm out of here. I thank you guys for joining me. As always, um, look forward to chopping it up with you guys in the near future. Uh, we'll be live again tomorrow. Um, as we always are. Uh, and the final time we will meet this week will be on Thursday where uh, we'll talk about the bye week. We'll talk a little bit about the trade deadline, maybe some things that this team or you know other teams around the league are doing. We'll talk about all those things. There will not be a Washington Football Nightly episode on Friday. Um, and so uh, we'll, re -re we'll resume our normal scheduled activities on Monday as we prepare for the Giants coming off of the bye week. So um, I'll see you guys tomorrow live, 8.30p. Uh, look forward to chopping it up with you guys um, You know, on other videos, including the podcast. Had one today. We'll have one tomorrow. Uh, and uh, we'll be live tomorrow night. And hopefully you'll join me then and we'll be able to talk about this team and maybe some roster moves and what teams around the league are doing. And what do you think about this team? And you know, where do you see this team heading after a big win in week number seven? I look forward to talking about all of those things and more tomorrow night live on Washington Football Nightly. Until then, I'm your man, Louis T. This has been Washington Football Nightly. I'll see you guys later on. Have a good one. Here comes the diesel. Here comes the diesel. There's the snap. Hand to Riggins. Good hole. He's got the first down to the 40. He's gone. The 35, the 30, the 20. He's gone. He's gone.